My name is Jeffrey James. I'm an associate professor and the program director for the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery at Augusta University. And we've been able to develop a 3D printed version of a, a nasopharyngeal swab. This printed version here has an increased surface area to collect specimen at the nasopharynx. It has your standard breakpoint for all standard swabs to be placed into your transport vial. And it has these very specific 3D grooves to note uh, the depth of your specimen. These grooves have been placed at 9 centimeters and 10.5 centimeters at the greatest depth. Anywhere in this range is your target for specimen collection. The folks at the Dental College of Georgia Print Lab are hard at work 24 hours a day to get these swabs to you guys on the front lines. We're attempting to create 5,000 of these swabs per day, and we can't thank you guys enough for helping us fight this virus in Georgia. When you're obtaining the nasopharyngeal swab, a common mistake is to want to tilt the head backwards. In fact, some guidelines suggest as far as 70 degrees, which would be all the way to here. That's for the purpose of making it easier to insert the swab into the nasal cavity. But unfortunately, at this angle, if you were to advance horizontally, which is a natural motion for the tester, you're likely to strike the middle turbinate, which is a sensitive stru structure hanging off the side of the nose. Or if you're slipping past the middle turbinate, you could end up into the skull base or into the sphenoid sinus. Both would be very uncomfortable and injurious to the patient. What we would recommend is that you actually tilt the head forward very slightly, only about five degrees. This would allow you to insert the swab along the floor of the nose in a horizontal direction. When you're to performing the test, you're going to insert the swab slightly into the nasal cavity after having the patient tilt their head five degrees forward. You're then going to rotate the swab so it lines up horizontally. It will move this part of the nose out of the way, which is soft. And then you're going to advance low and slow along the floor of the nose until you reach the nasopharynx where you will meet resistance. Now that we understand a little bit about the anatomy, I'm going to demonstrate how to properly perform this swabbing technique. So again, we're going to have the patient gently tilt their head just about five degrees forward. I'm gonna stand on the side of the patient that corresponds to my dominant hand so I can use my dominant hand for the insertion. So I'll be on his right. I'm gonna use my non-dominant hand to gently support the back of the head to keep them in the optimal position. As I discussed before, we're going to enter the nose in a natural angle, just slightly, then rotate so that we're almost horizontal with the ground. We're then going to slowly advance the swab, low and slow, along the floor of the nose until we reach our target. And as you can see, the indicator strips would say that we've gotten deep enough. I'm gonna leave the swab in place for just about 10 seconds. And then, as I'm withdrawing the swab, gently swirl twist back and forth to obtain as much specimen as possible. No trauma. Was that too bad or Not for you? Bad. Okay. All right. So I'll repeat that on the opposite side now to make sure that we get specimen from both sides of the nasopharynx. You will then take the swab, break it at the break point, and drop it into your testing vial to complete the test.